Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, the 16th of December, ending Friday the 20th. The last full real week of the year in terms of trading. We've got some stuff going on that could give us at least some excitement a couple of days of the week, but there's some other caveats as well. So let's first look at where we're at, and then we'll discuss uh, what's coming out and what to expect. So here's a look at the S&P daily chart. We did get uh, the 13 seeker sell signal. Uh, this week and then rolled over, uh, I'm sorry, last Friday and then rolled over this week finally on Tuesday and Wednesday in particular. Uh, so you can see that that signal is working so far in the markets. Uh, we also got the same on the NASDAQ 100. Here's a look at that signal. Both of them, again, coming at the same day. That's pretty unique and unusual. You had to know that was going to have a little bit of power in the market. So it's also taking the SOX lower. We pointed this out last week that the SOX was testing that risk line. Uh, just as we were getting the other signals, but of course, couldn't get through and rolled with the market. So overall, a negative week for the markets and, and based on the trade set seeker signal that we got, that's no surprise to us. It is an interesting time of year for that to be occurring. Uh, let's take a look also at oil at this time of year. Uh, I have gotten back up over 98, closing near 96 for the week. And we will also look at the front month gold contract, which has really been doing a whole lot of nothing. Um, Futures intra week. Let's take a look at the ES. Now, this was the week of the quarterly uh, contract roll. So you'll notice on this chart of the March 2014 ES contract, you'll notice uh, all the volume came in starting Thursday and then Friday. Uh, so this is when we roll from last contract, which was the December contract that expires this coming Friday. But all the big money stops trading it on Thursday of this week, a week early, and moves to the new contract by Friday, which usually leads to some poor technical action. And then we start uh, next week, we'll be back to normal. So you can see overall, though, the ranges for the week. Uh, Monday was very flat. Tuesday was very flat. Wednesday was finally the move down. Uh, Thursday, not a lot gained or lost either way. Friday, dead flat because of the option or the contract rule. Uh, here's a look at the NASDAQ side of that, just so that uh, you have an idea what that looks like. Pretty much the same thing. Monday and Tuesday, very flat. Wednesday, down. Thursday, flat. Friday, pretty flat. So. Uh, I would say overall that's uh, not very exciting to look at because we only have one day of real movement for the week. Also putting the daily charts back up, here's a look at Apple. You'll notice the uh, 13 cell signal here that Richard pointed out. Did go a little higher but never broke the risk line. Now we're starting to finally uh, come in a little bit on that. Uh, Google, here's a look at the Google chart. It got a 13 cell signal on Tuesday and immediately rolled with the market. Um, so uh, Amazon, some of our bigger traders, Amazon. Uh, very flat all week, really nothing going on uh, in Amazon. Note that it's only 11 bars up uh, towards the seeker sell signal. So a couple days up will give you the, sell, the signal there. And then uh, this is uh, Netflix started to climb this week. By the way, Tesla's made an interesting recovery. Let's take a look at the uh, Tesla chart. Uh, come back a bit and heading probably towards that green static trend line. At any rate, um, so that's the, the weekly and the interweek action. Let's now take a look at the data that's coming out this week, uh, coming up. Now, this is what's interesting. First of all, this is your last full week before we hit. The following week has Christmas on Wednesday, so the market's closed. Tuesday, Christmas Eve is a half day. It only leaves Monday, probably not going to be a lot of people trading. And then after Christmas, every year, market's dead for the days between Christmas and New Year's. So that means the day after Christmas, Thursday and Friday, we won't be doing regular picks off the report. We'll just be calling it in the room those days just to see if we get any movement early. But the, the lightest volume days of the year are typically that week. So once Christmas hits, I don't know that you're going to see much Monday anyways because it's kind of trapped out there on its own the following week after this coming one. Uh, and then a half day for Christmas Eve, you might as well not even be open, obviously. Um, but a lot of people are just going to start leaving this Friday and uh, heading out for their for a long vacation, given the fact that Christmas is dead in the middle of the week. Christmas on a Wednesday that week, Thursday and Friday probably dead. Then you get another weekend, and then you've got Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday has to be a full day, even though it's New Year's Eve, because that's the rules of the market. Wednesday, again closed, and then we come into the new year, and whether we even start to trade Thursday, Friday, or they wait until that following Monday is uh, always an interesting game to watch. So what do we expect out of this week? It's obviously the last week for there to be an opportunity, but... You've got uh, the triple expiration this week, and that would usually lead to a nice big uh, unraveling move probably on Monday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday. By Friday, obviously, it's all done. The Friday of triple expiration itself is usually a very, very flat session, and people will be walking out the door. Here's the caveat to all this. Let me go through the data that's coming out this week so you're aware of it. 
On Monday, we've got revised productivity for Q3, unit labor costs, net long-term tick flows, capacity utilization, and industrial production, all before the market opens. Some decent data there to start out the week, maybe we'll get some movement. On Tuesday, we've got the big CPI number. Uh, we've got current account balance, we've got a housing market index, but it's also the first day of a two-day Fed meeting, and that's the caveat to this whole week. You know how Fed meetings slow the market down. Wednesday, it would be really rare uh, to get the options unraveling move on the day of a Fed announcement. So Wednesday we have the MBA mortgage index, housing startups and building permits, crude oil inventories, and at 2 p.m. we have that Fed announcement. So we'll be watching for it, but usually you don't get the options unraveling move when you've got a Fed announcement. The Fed announcement doldrums trump everything else, which means they might save the options unraveling until Thursday, which could make Tuesday and especially Wednesday very light days, unfortunately. Um, but we'll watch. We'll see what happens on Wednesday just in case. Uh, then you get into uh, Thursday, and you've got continuing uh, and initial jobless claims, existing home sales, Philly Fed data, leading indicators. That's a lot of data. That's a good day to have some movement and do the options unraveling move. So I'd almost rather see it on Thursday. I think it would be a big, nice big move, especially with triple expiration. And then, of course, Friday, the final look at GDP for Q3, not really a market mover, and you have that triple expiration. So if I had to lay it out Monday, maybe a little bit of action to get us started early because of the data. Tuesday, things are probably going to slow down, even though you have the CPI early, but then we'll slow down for that Fed meeting. Wednesday, I would think pretty slow all day because of the Fed, and maybe we'll see if we get a move after the Fed, but I don't think you're going to get that options unraveling move. We'll be looking for it, but I don't think so. That leaves Thursday probably the better trading day of the week and probably the options unraveling move. Friday, a waste of time as everybody hits the road, and then the rest of the year, not much there, I'm sure. Uh, but we will see it. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. We will call it from the tape as it does. In the trade site lab, charts for this, as usual, brought to you by the Stellar eSignal 11 platform. Everybody have a great week and weekend and a great holiday season.